What's up everybody? Blue Gabe, we are at the boat ramp here in Stewart, Florida. I got my buddy Adam right there. <laughs> he called me last night and said he needed some fish to take with him deer hunting in Alabama. And I said, let's rip. But little did I know that God had other plans. It's howling, it's blowing, it's nasty, rainy. It's disgusting out. But I didn't buy a 31 contender to keep it at the dock and not fish when it's rough. We've got our frog togs, we got the boat full of gas, we got bait, we're going fishing right now. Y'all are coming with us. You gonna just stand there or are you gonna come over here? Just let your video, man. Just let your video do your thing. Adam is filming me long enough. Now he still stands out of the way when I'm filming. Like, it's so hard to get people used to the way I film for YouTube. I don't care if people walk up. We got some fans right over here, some little river rats. That was us when we were 17. We just met them at the at the gas station and we I'm- We were just talking about Yeah, it. literally. We used to do the same thing. What are y'all going fishing for? Oh, no. Can we talk about this mullet you got going on right here with the curls in the back? Oh my God. Can we talk, look, <laughs> y'all look at this right here. Let's get it in, up tight. Hey, you hey, sure there's tell, nothing hiding in there? I don't think so. We need to tell Trey to shave it off. <laughs> Trey needs to shave his head. <laughs> yeah, he does. So Trey is my stepson from my previous marriage. He's actually the boy's stepbrother. Those were some of his buddies. But Adam and I, when we grew up, pull that pin right there. When we grew up, we were just like those kids. Young, had us a boat, and we stayed on that water all the time. I asked them what they were doing this morning. They're like, they said they've been skipping Pompano. Hop in, open the center console, and just turn the batteries on, and I'll back in. And they're just going fishing. They don't care what they're going fishing for. They're just going fishing. And actually, that's exactly what we're doing today. I think we're gonna go out and try to catch some tile fish, some bee liners, maybe some dolphin. <laughs> you guys, I just got the funniest text ever. So the boy's mom just sent me that. Last night, for some odd reason, Luke decided to cut his own hair and he literally looks just like Jim Carrey. Look at that. Boy, Luke is something else. The wind is already starting to howl. It looks like it's gonna rain. Today's not gonna be the most friendliest day ever, but if you wait for the best days, you won't fish nearly enough. We're going. Got our foul weather gear, it's blowing straight out of the west pretty hard it's supposed to turn northwest which means it's going to get really rough out there and to me this is just as important as a nice day i want to show you how to do it on a rough day how you can go catch plenty of fish even when the conditions aren't great could you have picked a better day to go fishing Gorgeous, huh, North Star? <laughs> yeah. We're not getting on. we've got a full yeah. moon high tide you can see it's all the way out there in the parking lot i'm glad we got weather gear i can't tell you guys enough about frog dogs they have came so far in the game of foul weather gear. I know a lot of y'all, when you think about frog dogs, you think about those real cheap suits you can get from Walmart. Dude, they have upped their game and now have some of the best foul weather gear made. Actually, we should probably color coordinate so they know who they're looking at on camera. Okay. It's days like this that I literally look forward to. So now that we're all dressed up, I wanna show you guys how I sort of start my day on the boat when we're headed offshore. This is my chart plotter. This is my sounder, meaning this is the bottom. This is what I'm looking at on the map. Anytime I'm getting ready to leave the ramp, I try to have a plan in my head on where I'm gonna go, what we're gonna fish for. So today we're gonna to start by going to my farthest number, which is my tile fish spot. It's out in 720 feet. It's about 15 miles from right here. That way, it's supposed to get rougher as the day goes on. I can slowly work my way inshore instead of waiting till it gets rough and then going offshore. We're gonna try to catch some tile fish and then bump inshore and try to catch, that dude just caught a bonefish. That guy's got a bonefish. That's actually a really hard fish to catch. He's over there pumping a fishing and just, a bonefish is a species that a lot of people like pay a ton of money to go fly fishing for. And they're like this really, wouldn't you say like really high-end targeted species well here in stewart they'll come in in the flats and you catch them like catfish it's actually entertaining so headed offshore we're gonna try to catch tile fish and bee liners and in between that we're gonna try to catch some dolphin last week i brought taylor out here and we were doing the same thing and while we were catching tile fish we had a bunch of dolphins swim up so that's what we're doing 
I'm going to put the camera down though because it's going to get rough when we go out the inlet. We'll see y'all out there. you don't get seasick watching this because as you can tell from the footage on the way out it started out calm when we left the inlet slowly but surely it got rougher well now that we're out here it's really rough the wind's blowing so hard out of the west that it's actually blowing us to the east when we should be going to the north with the current so it's gonna get, take me a second to figure this out the reason it was so calm on shore like near the beach is because when we have a west wind, it's blowing over land, so it takes the ocean a little while to get rough, you know, as the wind comes across it. Adam was just laying down, plugging in my plug to the reel, and he's like, Woo! I can't lay there very long, I'll get sick. But if you want to catch fish and it's rough, there's only one way to do it. That's come out here and get right in the middle of it and do it. Adam, go ahead and set the bait out. The last one, let it start dragging. I'm fishing a different style of rig than you've ever seen me use on this channel. It's called an L bar and I'll show you in just a second. So we've got six hooks. Five of them are pretty close and the sixth one's way out about 15 feet past the rest. So it comes down to the L bar like this. The weight's right here. So L bar, weight, and then the hooks are trailing way behind it. Sort of like our mutton rig because I think we're gonna drift a lot faster than I would normally like to drift today. So I want that baits to lay right on the bottom. These tile fish live in the mud in little caves. So they're not out just randomly swimming around. So this is the L bar. Here's obviously the weight and the baits are right out there, but there's one way out, back, out past the rest. Go ahead and drop it. This is my new reel, the most expensive reel I've ever bought. These aren't feet, this is revolutions, meaning each time this spool goes around, I need it to get to a thousand and we'll be where we want to be. A little sporty out here, huh, Cap? Just a little bit, just a little bit. Good fishing weather though. Yeah. Big fish biting, big seas. If you follow along on my channel very long, we did some uh, mahi videos in Puerto Rico and it was so rough that day and those guys were so excited because when it gets real rough, the big fish bite and dang if they didn't bite that day in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. We caught two dolphin that day over 50 pounds, a 58 and a 56, a 35 and some other giants. It was insane. Probably the most epic day of dolphin fishing I've ever seen. So what's gonna make what we're doing right now really hard is no matter what the wind's doing, the tide is still going to the north. So the wind's wanting to push me to the east and the tide's wanting to take our line to the north and I'm gonna have to play cat and mouse the whole time we drift. All right, so we just touched bottom at about 900 revolutions and the line's already doing what I knew it was gonna do. It's coming underneath the boat. I'm looking for just little teeny bites. Already got a bite. Come to Papa. Hey, we can do it, son. We this can do it. This is some easy fishing. You see, y'all see this? Look at this. Let go. Even easier. Even, Even easier. easier. Hey, work harder, not smarter. Yeah. No way. Backwards. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Already hooked up, folks. Good fish. Yeah, got a good fish on. The hard part is, is now controlling the boat. It's wanting to get all up underneath us. I want to keep the boat into the waves so we're not rocking like this so bad because each time it rocks on that fish, it's pulling a hole bigger in its mouth. 
He hit hard. That was pretty bad. Dude, this reel is so nice. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa. That's the hardest I've seen the rod pull yet. This is my drag, so this is how I control how much pressure we're putting on him. I can't even turn the boat around in reverse because it's blowing so hard. When it's rough like this, having a good fishing partner makes all the difference. I could do it by myself, but it would be hard. He's coming. Tile fish sandwiches tonight. You taking them to Alabama? Yeah, there might be a few to take the ride. <laughs> It when always we, helps out. Yeah, when we went to Jackson Hole last week, Taylor and I fished the day before we left. And I took all the tile and dolphin fish that I vacuum sealed with us. We never went out to eat in Jackson Hole, Wyoming one time. We cooked fresh fish every single night. Probably saved us about 800 bucks in going yeah, out to eat. Especially and it was really, there. really good. I panko fried it one night, blackened it one night. It was freaking amazing. There he is. Keep it going, there you go. Keep it going, keep it going. Now swing the rod forward. Big, beautiful tile fish. And he oh, didn't no. e he didn't even eat the, there you go, hold on, I'll give you some line. That's a nice one. That's a really good one. So crazy that we just pulled him out of the mud in 800 feet of water. Well, 720, but. Fish number one in the box. We're gonna turn the camera off and catch one more because we're only allowed one apiece. Then we're gonna head in shore and do a little bit of snapper fishing, hopefully some dolphin fishing. But we're already winning. All right, folks at home. I wasn't gonna film again while we were out here, but my co-pilot is starting to feel a little bit. Green around the gills. You think I'll have to hold your hair if you puke? Hold, hold the beard hair a little bit. We got our second tile fish on and he is starting to feel a little bit green. God dang. And I got caught. Green, green meaning he's probably getting seasick right now. Hopefully we can get this fish up though and start moving a little bit faster than we are now and he'll feel better. Because I don't think there is anything worse than being seasick. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is it? Right now, it's a <laughs> I can't wait to see it at a 10. Might as well show you the second fish while we're here. One thing that's not in my blood is getting seasick, but I have had plenty of people get seasick on my boat and they look really bad when it happens. Oh, bigger than the first one. Oh, hold on, I got us all tied up. There you go. And he ate the first hook, that's so weird. They don't normally do that. Look down their throat. That's what I'm talking about, old son. It might be rough, but we're putting meat in the box. You guys, it's official. He's officially sick. Hopefully after this he feels better. If not, I'll take him in. But I'm gonna make him rough it out for a little while. Just because we're here and we're fishing because he wanted to go fishing. Oh God, he's driving so hard. If you've ever been seasick, leave a comment below and tell me just how bad it felt. I've never been, so I don't know. Or tell me if I should take him in right now or if I shouldn't just keep fishing. Because I can tell you the run in is going to be terrible. We're 15 miles offshore and we've got to run head into some nasty weather. You're doing it again? I'm just going to call you Ralph from now on. You okay, Ralph? I, 
I know some of you right now are mad at me because I'm laughing, but you gotta realize that we're really good friends. It's not like I'm laughing at and making fun of, but we gotta make joke of the situation. We, he's gonna be sick until we get to the dock, so. We've got two miles to our next destination. If he feels better when we get there, we'll fish. If not, we'll go in. Now is it a, on a one to 10, what is it? Oh. On a 12. <laughs> We went from a 5 to a 12. Oh. Get rid of Mountain Dew. Oh. Not good. Not good. We're trolling right now, so I have two dolphin, or actually three dolphin baits out trying to get a dolphin bite, mahi mahi, on the way to the snapper spot. That's what we did last weekend, and that's what we're doing now. I thought trolling would make him feel better, but apparently not. You wish you would have ate breakfast this morning? Breakfast this would not have happened. <laughs> Guaranteed. We'll see, folks. I know I got some funyuns in here. You want funyuns? We're gonna get some funyuns. Oh, that's good. We're gonna get some groceries in here now. That will taste bad on the way out. So we just pulled up to Push Button Hill, and I'm gonna explain to you what I'm looking for. So as you can see, right there is the boat. Look at that wad of fish. I've done all these loops looking for them, and I just found them. That's why it's important to have a good map, like Seymour maps a good chart plotter and a good depth finder. Now I know where they're at. And it's totally up to me to catch them. Hopefully I can pull this off. My co-pilot's pretty sick right now. He's like quiet. He's not acting himself. So it's all up to me. He wanted to fish. He wants some fish. So I'm gonna put him in the boat for him, hopefully. All I've got is a 40 pound test leader with four circle hooks. Little chunk of squid on each one. Let's see if we can't make this happen. Why didn't I mark them right then? I think they were further out. I think they were off and marked a little bit. Holy mackerel. If that's the case, that's a tiny. Nope, there they are right there, right? Yeah, no. I need to. Nope, that's them right there. Let me drop. Yep, there you go. Super important to pay attention to your bottom machine. Turn the wheel down there. If you're not sitting on the fish, you're not going to catch the fish. Still marking. It's 290 feet deep, 299. I'm holding my finger on the spool so as soon as it hits the bottom, I know it. Just that easy. Now this is an electric reel. I get that this is an electric reel, but my co-pilot right here who wanted to catch him by hand isn't feeling that great. So I got to do it the way I can do it. And that's with my Daiwa electric. If we do catch some good ones though, I'm going to rig him a rod up and make him catch some by hand. What'd you say? I said, daddy, can you rig me up a rod, please? Probably. Call me Luke. There's some tide too. Look at the fish we're still marking. All this light, see the red line? Anything above that is fish. Right here is the big ledge. We just come up on top of it. So there's actually a lot of snapper down there. Now the reason I'm using the Daiwa and not the LP is that LP is just so big. These fish aren't that big. You need a little bit of a softer tip. This reel is gonna stop in just a minute. Can you grab my fish for me please? Look at it. One second. There's dolphin right under him. Look, him a on. nice dolphin. Oh, oh no. Hold on. Hold oh on. no. This is my time. Your time to shine. My time to shine. Get it, get it, get it. Oh, there's dolphin everywhere. Throw it out. Throw it out right there. No, he's, the fish are swimming that away. They'll find it. Where'd you, 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 uh. Oh, there he is. There he is. Just let, oh, there! Nice fish too. He's on. Yep, yep. We got a mess. Nice mahi at the back of the boat. All right. Luckily, you're tall. 
You're coming. No, no, no. Just swing him like a crane. Don't. You're going to break him off doing that. Holy mackerel. You're giving me a heart attack. See that? What I tell you? Mahi in the boat. My snapper. Oh, it's a good one. Targeted species acquired. Shark's about to eat mine. Shark just ate mine, the second shark in a row. You better reel fast. That was probably $20 in lead I just lost. Look at that, absolutely nothing. Second drop, second shark. You letting Rodney help you or what? That's the best way to do it. A lot of people don't realize what it's like to reel a fish up from 300 foot of water. Bicep burning, and I'm about to puke. You're gonna puke again? <laughs> I've never known you to be a puker. Oh, puke. Oh, shark just ate it right there. Oh, you jerk. And your fish just come off. What a jerk. Look at that. Absolutely nothing but line back. You bit it off right at the bottom hook. You got him hooked in the back. And he would have took the lead. He did take the lead. Look at that, folks. Oh my goodness. Folks at home. All right, you guys, Taylor showed up. I threw you for a little bit of curveball here. Obviously, you know. We're not at my house. We came to our favorite sushi restaurant, Fujiyama. We brought two of the beeliners, the Vermilion Snapper with us, and the chefs here have been whipping up all kinds of awesome stuff. Look at that. Are you excited, Adam? Oh, I'm ready to dig in. So I was just tired of cooking every time at my house. I wanted to do something different. The funny thing is, is Adam and I tried to come here yesterday. Where are you at? Right here. We tried to come here and do this yesterday when we got off the boat and I walked in and I'm like, well, since y'all are dead, you can, you know, help me out. Let's do this sushi deal. And they were closed. So that's why we're here today. Look at that though. Wow. I got to get some light. Let me, let me get my phone. Oh yeah. Here we go, folks. Let me get right there. That. <laughs> that look good or what? So good. But can you smell it? But can but you, can you smell, it? smell it? A little bit of soy sauce. Mm. This is a whole lot better than yesterday. Throwing up? <laughs> that tasted way worse than this. I can promise you. But this is really good. So fun fact about Taylor here, she can't hear anybody throwing up. And when she came into town yesterday, she walked in while I was editing the part of him throwing up that she turned around and walked right back outside. So they literally just whipped up all kinds of cool things. I don't even know what this is, but it's all snapper. That's all we brought. Oh my goodness, that's good. You want to, you got your own. You want to try this one. I've actually tried this here before. Remember they made this with the Rainbow Runner? Yeah, it's really good. It does have a little spice to it. I believe there's a jalapeno on it. Mm. All right, they're singing happy birthday for somebody in the back. Right now we're ending this video because Taylor and I are actually going. I'm taking her on her first hog hunt is what I was getting at right now. We got to literally haul boogie drive two and a half hours to camp. I've got a big hog showing up to one camera all the time now, like every evening at four o'clock. So this video is ending. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for laughing along with me with um, Ralph over here throwing up. And if you didn't like that I was making fun of one of my best friends, I don't know what to tell you. That's just how... Don't be she so was giving me a hard time for laughing at her. Don't, don't be so soft in life. Just a little bit. Don't be so soft. Don't be so soft in life. Literally. Have fun. Have fun. Laugh at your buddies. 
If you catch a fish and you ever want to take it somewhere, just take it. Walk in and ask them if they'll cook it for you. Worst case scenario, they say no. Fortunately for me, they said yes here. And we're glad we came. This food is so, so good. good. We'll see y'all in, hey, what? This is amazing. Are you getting a little bit more talkative on the camera now? I just caught you, she just said two. Are you warming up to the camera? Hey, we'll see y'all in the next one.